Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to our Between Lands Spotlight tutorial series. So today what we're going to be talking about is getting started in Between Lands. You know, last episode we talked about the basic mechanics and how to get to the Between Lands. Now it's time that we take a look at what do you do once you reach uh, the Between Lands. So first and foremost, you're going to go through the basic um, kind of actions. You're going to break your wood, you're going to punch it and get yourself um, some wood, make yourself a crafting table. That's all pretty default, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that. Um, what I do suggest that you do is go ahead and make your sword, your shovel, your axe, your pick. Um, shovel, of course, you can do without that, but it's not a bad thing to have, especially when, um, you know, in the between lands there's so much dirt and mud and things that the shovel does break efficiently um, that it's worth going for all of that. Now, as far as armor, um, you can go for lurker skin armor, but it's not great armor um, defensively. You're going to be better off going straight for bone. Uh, bone you're going to get from mining, which we'll talk a little bit more about next episode. Also killing swamp hags, which are going to be your primary. Um, those and chiromals, blood leeches, things like that, are going to be your primary antagonists um, kind of in the above ground here. You're going to see a lot of these guys walking around. And now the next thing, um, probably doing it about the same time as you're getting wood, uh, depending, you need to get food and you need to get sap um, and or some way to heal your decay, right? Now you can break these mushrooms as well as the black hat mushrooms. Um, they're fine if you're in a bind on food. Uh, these mushrooms right here, however, eating them is going to give you hunger. So if you do find that you need to eat mushrooms to survive, go ahead and let your hunger bar get down to about three or four shanks before you eat them otherwise you're just going to end up I mean you're never going to be able to top off your food with hunger it's kind of like you know whenever you have to eat rotten flesh to survive um, you don't want to try to keep your health topped or your hunger topped off uh, there's also plenty of creatures to hunt depending on the biome that you start in uh, mire snails are one example you can see there's three right there um, that have just spawned naturally these are fine you can cook their flesh and eat it and it's not bad uh, food at all. Um, you're going to be better off, though, farming them if you can. But on your first day, it's not a bad um, option. There's also swamp reeds and swamp kelp. These are swamp reeds. You're going to see these growing about everywhere. Um, and this is swamp kelp. You're going to see it kind of poking its head up out of the water. Both of these can be grabbed up and fried, providing you with a little bit of food. Now, if you're near deep water of any sort like this or like a deep water biome, um, one really good option is anglerfish. You're going to see a lot of, there was one, I think it swam off, um, especially, yeah, right here. You're going to see a lot of these, and if you're in, an easy way to farm these is if you're in game mode S, you get their attention, they're going to come busting up out of the water, and then they just kind of flail around like Magikarp at that point. And you can pretty easily farm these. Um, another thing that you can do, yeah, there we go. And you can see I got two raw angler meat. Now let me go ahead and turn off the heavy rain real quick. Um, we'll be talking more about the events of the Between Lands, but um, another thing that you can do is just keep an eye out for anglers and lurkers fighting. Um, it's actually a very common, common occurrence. Lurkers are the big, um, almost crocodile looking creatures. Now, like I said, you can kill these and get their skin to make armor. Um, and we'll talk more about that later and its effects. But it's great armor, but it's not good defensively. Um, I, however, when you're first starting out, I'm, I don't really suggest that you go out of your way to hunt these. They're not too bad to fight on land. Um, but I, I definitely would not suggest trying to dive in the water and take them on. Now, they're not aggressive. Uh, if I go into game mode S and I hang out around this lurker, he's not going to do anything to me. However, at the moment that I start attacking him, he's going to kind of go on the offensive. And you can see, he even with this sword, he takes quite a few hits to bring down. Um, so I do suggest you kind of avoid hitting them. However, lurkers and anglerfish are born enemies. They hate each other, and they will attack each other on sight. So, for example, if I was to throw in a lurker in the water here, we give him a second to kind of realize where he's at, there we go. They're going to start fighting. And what's going to happen? Lurkers are, nine times out of ten, they're going to annihilate the anglerfish. 
and you can oftentimes hit that one didn't drop any but you can oftentimes find angler meat just floating in the water um, really easy way to farm up um, pretty reliable food if you're if you find yourself near the water also frogs these are fairly common especially around island biomes they're a great source of food because they do drop frog legs which you can cook um, probably the hardest biome to find yourself starting in is either going to be the marsh or the sludgy plains. Marsh isn't too bad, sludgy plains is a little bit dangerous. Both do have food available. Um, you just kind of have to put in a little bit more effort for that food. Um, and we'll, we'll pop over there and I'll show you. Um, basically, if you're starting in a sludge plains, I highly suggest you just shoot for sludge jello like right out the gate. Um, it's a great source of food. Now another thing that you can look for, um, let me, um, another thing you can look for are these two things here. One, this one is a bulb capped mushroom. This can be consumed, well not that version, but the, um, this that you get whenever you break it. Um, these can be consumed and they will give you nausea. So just a heads up on that. Um, they will give you nausea, but they'll also give you some night vision as well. So if I eat this bulb cap mushroom, uh, you can see that I am going to get uh, two seconds of nausea, but I do get an equal amount of night vision. Um, not great, but they are good in a bind. And if, you, if you're mining and you don't mind living with the nausea and you need to see like into a dark cave or something like that, they can be useful for that. Just know that you're going to get that nausea. But it can be good for scouting a cave. Now there's also weeping blues. These are actually very, very good. Um, this is, if you're trying to survive in the between lands, I would, depending on your situation, I may suggest to farm Weeping Blues fairly early, which we'll talk about how to farm these um, in an upcoming episode. But you're going to see these flowers on occasion. They're not overly common, um, but you do see them decently often in kind of island type biomes um, is where I tend to find them. Um, and Weeping Blues are great because you get these Weeping Blue petals. And you can also make weeping blue petal salads, um, which are a bit better. But if we eat this, you'll see we get a half shank of hunger, but we also get elixir of ripening, which basically is going to give you 30 seconds of decay regeneration. So if your decay starts going down, you pop one of these, and it's basically going to fill itself back up. So basically it's like a full decay heal, well, you know, pretty much. Now there's also weeping blue petal salads. If we wait for this elixir of ripening to wear off, uh, and we pop one of these, you can see that we get three and a half minutes. It's also a very, very good food, and it gives us three and a half minutes of elixir of ripening. So once you're up at the point where you can make weeping blue petal salads, not a bad idea to make it. Um, because, for example, I could, at this point, go hang out in um, some stagnant water, and you can see it's not doing anything. I've got elixir of decay, but I've also got elixir of ripening, and it's pretty much counteracting everything from the elixir of decay. Um, so it's very, very potent. Um, also, if you find yourself on these patchy island type biomes, stuff like this, these are these are the raised islands. You'll know the difference between raised islands and patchy islands because raised islands are pretty much always going to be one block higher. Um, but they share a lot of the same flora and fauna as patchy islands. There's a few differences, but we'll talk um, we'll talk about some of those later on. But but uh, not all of them, I'm sure. There's a lot of plants in the between lands, uh, if you couldn't tell. Um, but when you're on these islands, you will oftentimes see crabs. Crabs are aggressive on site, so just a forewarning, but they can be killed to get crab meat, which you can use to make crab sticks. Um, now, in addition, you can look for nibble twig trees, which are going to be these right here. You'll, they're kind of similar somewhat to sap trees because they do have the dots in the bark, but an easy way to tell, sap trees are going to have two dots um, in the bark, whereas nibble twig, it's going to be a little bit more wild and random. Um, and what you can do with nibble twig logs is if I was to grab a couple of these, um, the same is true for this variant as well. And I craft these together, I can get nibble sticks. Now they're not a great food. They only restore about a half shank of hunger, but um, it does work in a bind. And I mean, with a full tree, you can make a fair few nibble sticks to kind of get you started. And they're a very, very common tree as well. And by the way, before I forget, one thing to mention is the bulb cap mushrooms over there, um, they also make a really good torch. Because um, before you have sulfur, 
which isn't going to be a very long time. But before you have sulfur, you can just left click, break these, and place them around. So they're kind of like torches that you can move around, um, you know, just like regular torches, and they do emit a lot of light. Uh, my Celestial Journey series, this is what I use for lighting my base. Uh, in most cases is these so when you're starting if you get lucky enough to find one of these like right out the gate Not a bad idea to grab the bulb cap mushrooms just so you have a light source Available to you now most of the biomes that you could start in aren't too bad deep waters Just be aware. There's a lot. There's a lot of anglers if you find yourself in just a lot of water um, It can be a little bit dangerous But you're gonna have plenty of food because of anglers and you will find islands with these but this biome right here is probably the worst one to start in. And we'll talk more about why this biome is so dangerous a bit later. Um, the main things you're going to be looking out for here are these guys right here, which we're going to be using these in a minute. I'm going to show you a really quick setup that you can do day one that does make your life a lot easier. Um, and you're also going to run into peat mummies. They're pretty much, um, they'll ruin your day early on if you're not careful. <laughs> I do. If you run into a peat mummy, Water can kind of help you out, but uh, there's a pretty good chance if you're in the middle of this biome, you're probably going to die um, <laughs> if you're just starting out. It's a very, very dangerous biome. And then lastly, there's these guys right here. These are tar beasts. Probably the strongest mob in the Between Lands bosses excluded. These guys are super dangerous, and without good armor, uh, they can one-shot you. So just be aware of that. We'll talk more about them a bit later on. Um, but the main sources of food and decay um, you wouldn't think there's a whole lot of food available in this biome but this is actually the best biome for easy food it's just extremely dangerous um, the first and probably the least lucrative is going to these ruins here these type buildings and some of these although i don't know yeah this one right here you can see these urns and let me make sure there's not a tar base here uh, these urns here, you can break these open, and you're going to get random loot. There is sometimes going to be termites in them, like that one. Um, these guys aren't too dangerous. Unless they knock, knock you into a tar pit. Um, but you can get food and decay um, restoration items from those urns. However, the best source of food in this biome are the sludges themselves. And the sludge that they leave behind. So you can see this guy's leaving this brown stuff behind. That is sludge. Um, and we talked a little bit about sludge last episode. But I want to show you a really quick little setup here. So let's get that. And what you're going to want is you're going to want to get yourself a shovel. It can be a weedwood shovel. It can be a bone shovel. It doesn't matter what kind of shovel that you have. And then you pretty much just need some blocks. And I'm going to be showing you a setup with hoppers. You don't have to have hoppers for this to work um, if you're manually collecting, but you can do some automation once you get up to where you have hoppers. Um, so what you're going to do is just find yourself a little area, set up your chest, set up your hoppers, and depending, you can lure these in. I've lured them into a one by one space. Um, but it is a little bit difficult in some cases to get them to fit into a one by one space, um, especially since small sludges don't really work with this. You're going to want a regular sludge. Small sludges are uh, like this little guy here. You can see he's not leaving behind any brown stuff um, because he's a S-M-O-L sludge, small sludge. <laughs> and those guys, they're not all that useful for this system because they're not going to leave any sludge behind. But what you're going to want to do is set yourself up something kind of like this. And if you have something to transport mobs, like from another mod, something like mob imprisonment tool, soul vial, something like that, you can easily get these guys into a one-by-one one space. However, if you're actually luring the sludge, it can be a little bit difficult to get them to, to fall in perfectly and stay in a one-by-one one space. Um, just because of their, kind of their body size. You can see right here, this guy um, is fairly decent size. So he's going to be a little bit tough to get into a one by one um, without some way to force him in there. But what you can do is, well, that one jumped. There we go. That one fell in. <laughs> but what you're going to do, let's just set our game mode to S. And you can see they leave this brown stuff behind. 
And what you can do is you can just sit here and break this. Um, now, if you can get them into a one by one space, it works better because you can just target one spot. Um, whereas if it's a four by four, sometimes you do have to move your shovel around. If you have them in a one by one space, you can pretty much just AFK farm this stuff. Um, and then once you get a sludge in there, I do suggest that you name tag it if it's available. And then you can just keep crafting this stuff up. And what you're going to get are these sludge balls. Um, and then what you do is you can smelt that and you're going to get sludge jello, which is a fairly decent food um, starting out. Especially if you have this like right out the gate. Very, very powerful food and very easy to mass produce. And you can take it a step further, combine it with some sap, get yourself some sap jello which is going to be good food and it heals your decay so you can have kind of the best of both worlds only taking up one inventory slot and easy to farm up a stack at a time of this stuff. Um, in addition it's used to make white pear jello which is one of the top tier foods of the between lands um, that you can easily farm. This is a marsh biome and I should mention this one just really quick because it can be a little bit tricky to find food in this biome as well uh, but these ruins here you have to be a little bit careful because if you find one with a one with a white spawner it can be a bit dangerous um, when you're first starting the between lands but these will oftentimes have food and sometimes sap and things in them um, there is also well there's another one here we can see what's in this one yeah there's pink marshmallows jam donuts green marshmallows um, and there's also these which tend to have a lot of urns around them which can contain more food and more um, sap and things like that Keep an eye out for Weeping Blues. They will spawn in these biomes as well. Um, decently decently uncommon, I suppose. Yeah, there's another one, um, but you can spot them as you run around. That's going to be your main sources. Um, this biome is probably the hardest as far as food goes, but you may want to just hurry out of this biome um, as soon as possible. Um, some of those spawners around the ruins will have, um, yeah, see there's a ton of chests or ton of urns here, but some of those spawners will have blood snails. If you find one of those, um, you're pretty much set on food for a little bit because you can just farm that spawner and not destroy it and kill your blood snails, get your snail meat and cook that. So, so once you've kind of conquered the overworld, I mean, I don't suggest you dive underground right out the gate. It's not necessarily a bad idea, but you need to, bare minimum before you go mining, I highly suggest you find a sap tree, cut it down, so you've got some kind of sap restoration for your decay bar, and I suggest you get at least a little bit of food. But once you have that stuff, um, the next thing I suggest you go for, once you start mining, and we'll talk more about mining in the next episode, but you, you should go for Simerite Shears. Um, because what these are going to allow you to do, if you get yourself a bowl and you get yourself some of these black cat mushrooms and flathead mushrooms. So once you have your shears, what you're going to look for are these right here. These are nettle. Um, these are flowered nettles. These are regular nettles. Both work just fine. Um, one thing to note, you'll oftentimes know where these are because if you're running through the between lands, sometimes you won't notice them, especially if they're not flowered. But if you touch them, you will take damage. So if you find yourself taking damage, this is probably the culprit of that um, as you're running through the between lands but you do need to have a set of shears to harvest this because if I harvest this with my hands I'm not going to get anything um, so you do want to get two pieces of Simerite and make this but once you have shears and you make yourself some weedwood bowls you throw those in with black hat mushrooms flathead mushrooms and nettle you're gonna make what's called nettle soup um, this food is very powerful um, for like a starter food it restores um, I believe it's five shanks of hunger. Though I would honestly, I would say go for the sap jello. That's my personal preference because it's going to take care of your decay and it's going to take care of your hunger. But with that, we are going to end out this episode of here. I think that covers pretty much the you know, the day one basics. Basically just covering how do you survive, how do you get food and heal your decay and make your life a bit easier before you start tackling um, you know, some of the more dangerous parts of the mod. Mining in Between Lands is fairly dangerous because you're generally going to be caving. So um, I do suggest you do stock up on food and uh, decay healing. And maybe if you can swing it even, bone armor. But anyways, um, with that, we're going to end out this episode. I hope it helped. I hope it helped you guys with like kind of initial survival um, within the Between Lands. 
Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button. And go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. Next episode, we're going to be covering mining and the underground. Because I think realistically, that's probably the next place that you're going to want to head after you get your food and stuff is to the underground. So that's what we're going to be covering next episode. So I hope you guys join me for that. Um, and until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.